You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is Forests of the Night by Fanny Chouteau. We knew we were in the wrong, but we didn't stop. We couldn't. We were like naughty children testing our boundaries. We refused to see sense. We were warned a hundred times, but ignored the signs. Thousands died and we thought it was just a coincidence. Just bad weather. Huge waves besieged the coastlines, biting off big chunks of the land. Winters disappeared and then came back with the force of a hundred snowstorms. We shrugged. Then, one day, we pushed too far. In the morning we woke up and our cities were gone, giving way to the untamed wildness. A real forest grew in place of the concrete jungle. The Vatican stated it was the apocalypse. The internet said it was aliens. There was a live broadcast from the White House. The president reassured the citizens of planet Earth that they had it under control. There was no reason to panic. They were, of course, all wrong. The first day was a mishmash of CNN breaking news, prayers, and fight for supplies. The children were happy, though. They played on the streets, swinging on thick arms of trees, rolling the strange ruby-red fruits to each other. They weren't afraid. Night fell with the deliberate silence of a predator. We slept with bolted doors and guns on nightstands. Our dreams were dark and heavy. By morning, the children disappeared. The doors remained bolted. No sign of violence, no explanation. We didn't have to ask one another. We saw the answer in each other's eyes. The silence grew deeper. It wasn't dotted by the laughter of babies or the songs of little girls. Sometimes we heard the howl of a wolf or the muffled cry of a rifle. The world around us was more alive than ever. Food became scarce. People disappeared. Fear slowly covered every inch of our skin. It was growing around us like the unstoppable vegetation. Then, the dreams started. Maybe it was the ever-present pollens, or the thick smell of the resin. The forest was in our minds. We closed our eyes and lulled ourselves to sleep, trying to ignore the loud protests of our stomach. Hunger had become an everyday guest. Our peaceful nights were over. We closed our eyes just to open them again. We knew we were sleeping, yet everything seemed so real. It was somehow truer than in the waking hours. We stood in the middle of the forest. We felt the breath of the woods on our faces, and the thick carpet of leaves was soft under our feet. The air was full of noises, the shrieks of birds, and a distant rumble. The ground shook and we understood. Something was coming for us. We ran like there was no tomorrow. Roots appeared out of nowhere trying to trip us. Ravens flew into our faces, aiming for our eyes with their sharp beaks. We felt the panting of death on the back of our neck. The first rays of morning arrived with lightness of mercy. We made it through. We woke up with a jolt, breaking the surface of the dream, gasping for air. We found food in front of the door. Small heaps of fruit and some animals freshly killed. Our stomachs hadn't had enough to eat for days. It was not the time for questions. We also didn't want to know. Deep down, we all suspected this was our reward for surviving the night. A small tribute, a token payment. In the morning, when we were just blinking away the dream from our eyes, they came for the victims of the night. It was the young man who had always had a proud frown and took more from the stocks than was his due. He had become heavy from the unrighteous gains and a fox had caught his ankle during last night's chase. Tendrils of ivy appeared around his body, and soon he was covered in a green net. 
We were so afraid we didn't dare move. The vines lifted him and took him out of the door which opened by itself. We saw him disappearing among the leaves, swallowed by the lush green. The forest fed us, and it fed on us. We found the equilibrium which had been lost a thousand years ago, even if it cost us our lives. Every night, the forest took somebody from us. But the daylight hours became easier. We learned to appreciate what we had, and we learned to let go of the memories of the past. After a few months, a leader came to us in our dreams. She called herself Tiger, and she knew the best places to hide from the rage of the forest. She saved us so many times, our fingers weren't enough to count. However, she was never there when we woke up. Some said she was a fragment of nature who had pity on us. Some said she was just too private to be with us in the waking. It didn't really matter. Our nights became less lethal. The bouts of rage slowly faded away. It has been a long time since anybody died. We hear birdsong again after the long reign of silence. The shadows among the trees are lighter. This is paradise. There's only one thing we don't talk about. We don't want to think about it. There are no children born. Although love flows freely under the cloudless sky, our wombs bear no more fruit. As nature around us became more powerful and fertile, so have we lost our ability to reproduce. We tell ourselves, maybe it's for the better. Maybe it's all part of a greater plan. That's how we console our crying women. We are living in the twilight hours of our race. While humans survived the apocalypse they had unleashed on our planet, humankind was slowly disappearing under the thick vegetation of a new, manless era. This was Forest of the Night by Fanny Chouteau. Fanny Chouteau is a writer in her mid-twenties. She writes in Hungarian and English poems, flash fiction, and countless unfinished novels. She tries to find the magical in the everyday and likes to spy on the secret life of cities and their inhabitants. Read more on her blog, Ink Maps and Macaroons, or follow her on Instagram and Twitter. Check our show notes for links. Music is provided by Mads. Learn more about 600 Second Saga, our authors, how to submit your flash fiction, and how to support the podcast in the show notes. This has been Mariah Avix and 600 Second Saga.